Some aircraft were born to break the rules, others to prove that impossible visions could fly. From shapes that seemed absurd to machines that set records, these creations shocked, amazed, and inspired. Get ready to explore designs that looked insane but redefined innovation. How did aviation create planes so bizarre yet fascinating? In the 1960s, when supersonic fighters defined military power, a civilian aircraft emerged that looked like it belonged in combat. The Dyke Delta was the brainchild of John Dyke, designed as an experimental home built. Its sharp delta wing mirrored the aerodynamic choices of Cold War interceptors. Instead of a standard private airplane, it appeared as a futuristic war machine, shocking aviation circles with its military look and unorthodox style. The cockpit sat at the tip of its triangular fuselage, amplifying the aggressive stance. A retractable landing gear, almost unheard of in amateur aircraft, added even more of a fighter vibe. Many thought the Dyke Delta looked too strange for civilian skies, but pilots who flew it reported strong, reliable handling. The design, while eccentric, delivered stability in flight. It was both bizarre and fascinating, straddling the line between private plane and military experiment. Commercial success never followed. Only a handful were built, each serving as a conversation piece more than a practical transport. Yet the Dyke Delta became a cult symbol within experimental aviation. Enthusiasts admired how it blurred the boundaries between civilian leisure, flying, and military design philosophy. Even though the market rejected its unusual form, it left an imprint that celebrated imagination, proving unconventional ideas could take to the skies with daring results. Today, the Dyke Delta stands as a testament to aviation's willingness to defy expectations. It showed how creativity could transform a private airplane into something that looked ready for combat. While Americans marveled at this triangular anomaly, across the Atlantic, another radical creation appeared. Unveiled in the late 1970s in the United Kingdom, the Edgeley EA-7 Optica looked more like a hovering spacecraft than an airplane. Its fully glazed nose gave pilots a 360-degree panoramic view of the world, making it perfect for surveillance. A Lightning IO 540 engine with 260 horsepower pushed it to 130 miles per hour or 209 kilometers per hour, but speed was never its priority. Its signature was slow, stable flight. A ducted rear pusher propeller cut noise dramatically, allowing long patrols with near stealth. Police forces, coast guards, and photographers praised its quiet endurance. Flying it felt more like floating than racing, letting pilots capture precise imagery even in poor conditions. With its bubble cockpit and unusual tail, the Optica seemed bizarre, but its practical advantages fascinated anyone needing ultimate visibility in the sky. Still, challenges held it back. High production costs limited sales, and a few accidents hurt its reputation. Operators stressed it demanded specific training to master its slow, stable handling. That discouraged buyers seeking simplicity, but enthusiasts loved its distinctive flying bubble look. The Optica proved that an aircraft could be considered strange, even bizarre, yet remain completely functional and useful in specialized missions where few others could compete. Only a handful of Opticas remain active today, lovingly kept by collectors and airshow pilots. Their legacy proves innovation can deliver unique capabilities, even if the market resists. The bizarre turned fascinating through vision and bold design. And while Britain explored full visibility through a glass bubble, across the United States, experimental builders pushed in the opposite direction, crafting one of the smallest and most efficient aircraft ever seen. In the late 1970s, American builders launched one of the most compact experimental aircraft ever conceived. The Quickie Q2 looked strange with its canard layout, yet efficiency defined it. Powered by a Revmaster 2100 delivering 64 horsepower, it cruised at 155 miles per hour and could reach 180 miles per hour. Its dual wing system, one forward and one aft, gave it natural stability. Pilots praised its forgiving behavior and low fuel burn. Built with lightweight composites, it offered structural strength at minimal weight. Storage was simple, even in small hangars or garages, making it a dream for amateur pilots. What looked bizarre at first was, in practice, a fascinating balance of design and function. At airshows, the Q2 stood out immediately. Its tiny frame and unusual stance contrasted sharply with traditional airplanes. Pilots who tested it described smooth handling and responsive controls. 
impressive for such a small aircraft. Maintenance was simple, parts were accessible, and reliability high. Though unconventional, it became an icon of experimental creativity, proving size was no barrier to serious aviation performance. The Quickie Q2 influenced later builders who valued simplicity and efficiency. It showed how modest horsepower could achieve remarkable speed and control. From its strange proportions emerged a fascinatingly effective machine that captured attention worldwide. In the late 1970s, Burt Rutan introduced the Long EZ, a sleek aircraft that combined futuristic looks with unmatched range. Its long canard, slender fuselage, and swept wings gave it a glider-like silhouette. Powered by a Lycoming O235 producing 115 horsepower, it cruised at 183 miles per hour and could reach 220 miles per hour. Constructed from lightweight composites, the Long EZ balanced strength with economy. It offered a range of over 2,000 miles, enabling cross-country and even international flights without frequent fuel stops. Its aerodynamics reduced pilot workload, keeping long journeys less tiring. What seemed bizarre on the ground became fascinating in the air, proving that unconventional design could deliver practical long-range performance. In competitions, the Long EZ often outperformed conventional light aircraft. Pilots praised its steady handling and reliable response, even after hours in flight. Airshow crowds admired its futuristic lines, while engineers studied its technical achievements. Though unusual in shape, it was far more than a novelty. It set a new benchmark for experimental aviation, blending radical design with efficiency that rivaled larger and more costly aircraft. The Long EZ inspired a generation of home builders to pursue ambitious goals. Where the Quickie Q2 had proved that small could still be powerful, the Long EZ proved endurance could be achieved without compromise. From bizarre beginnings emerged one of the most fascinating home-built aircraft of all time. Next, the story of bold innovation in aviation, a vision of luxury and technology. In the mid-1980s, the executive aircraft market witnessed something that seemed to leap from a science fiction film. The Beechcraft Starship carried a bold canard design, twin pusher turboprops, and an all-composite carbon fiber body. Powered by two Pratt and Whitney PT-6, a 667 engines, each producing 1,200 horsepower, it reached 405 miles per hour, or 652 kilometers per hour. Its structure was revolutionary. Instead of aluminum, the Starship used carbon fiber, a material far ahead of its time in aviation. The sleek canard layout provided natural stability and handling benefits, while its futuristic lines challenged every traditional notion of executive transport. Inside, the Starship offered luxury on par with much larger jets. It combined comfort and innovation, setting itself apart as both bizarre in appearance and fascinating in engineering execution. Despite these breakthroughs, the Starship faced resistance. Its unconventional silhouette frightened conservative buyers who preferred traditional jets. Production costs were very high, limiting demand, and the market never embraced the futuristic aesthetic. Though technologically advanced, the aircraft's radical shape and high price resulted in poor sales. Yet, aviation enthusiasts and engineers still saw it as a masterpiece, representing bold design that dared to rewrite the rules of business flying. Today, only a few starships remain airworthy, treasured by collectors who preserve them as symbols of ambition. Its use of composites influenced countless future aircraft, proving that radical ideas could pave the way for mainstream adoption decades later. Even if the Starship seemed futuristic, yet symmetrical, the next creation from Burt Rutan broke even further from tradition. Unveiled in the mid-1990s, the Rutan boomerang quickly earned a reputation as the strangest twin-engine aircraft ever built. Instead of the usual mirrored symmetry, it carried two fuselages of different sizes, each housing a different engine. On one side, a Lightning IO-360 delivered 200 horsepower, while on the other, a Continental IO-550 produced 300 horsepower, driving the boomerang to 250 miles per hour, or 402 kilometers per hour. This unusual asymmetry was not for looks. It solved a long-standing safety issue in twin engine aircraft. Dangerous yaw when one engine failed. By carefully offsetting the fuselages and engines, Rutan ensured balanced thrust even during an emergency. This meant the boomerang could fly straight and safe with one engine out, something few other twins could match. What seemed bizarre on the ground became fascinating once understood in the air. Pilots who tested it reported predictable handling and impressive stability, quickly forgetting its odd shape. 
Its asymmetric design drew crowds at air shows, sparking debates among engineers about efficiency, drag, and redundancy. Spectators marveled at its alien look, while experts admired the logic hidden behind the eccentric form. The boomerang was not just an experiment in asymmetry, but a serious study in how radical design could enhance safety and performance. The boomerang never entered production, remaining a one-of-a-kind prototype. Yet, it demonstrated how thinking differently could lead to extraordinary safety gains. Its legacy continues to influence experimental research in aerodynamics and redundancy. As Rutan's masterpiece of asymmetry fascinated the world, another project emerged with ambitions even greater. In the mid-1980s, Sikorsky introduced one of the most ambitious hybrid aircraft ever imagined. The Sikorsky X-Wing was designed to combine vertical takeoff like a helicopter with the speed of a fixed-wing airplane. Powered by a General Electric T-58 turboshaft producing 1,500 horsepower, it carried a unique four-blade rotor that could stop in flight, locking into position as fixed wings. The transition from helicopter to airplane mode was controlled entirely by computer. During vertical flight, the rotor spun like a traditional helicopter. Once in forward flight, it would stop and lock into place, becoming an aerodynamic wing. Additional control surfaces managed stability, promising an aircraft with unmatched versatility. On paper, it was revolutionary. In practice, the technology to make the transition seamless was still in its infancy, creating enormous technical challenges. Test flights showed promise, but also exposed severe vibration issues and complexity in the locking system. Maintenance requirements soared and costs quickly spiraled beyond expectations. Still, the project demonstrated the potential of hybrid concepts, proving that vertical lift and high speed were not mutually exclusive. It looked bizarre with its frozen rotor wings, but inspired fascination among engineers, laying groundwork for future vertical takeoff aircraft that would emerge decades later. Ultimately, the X-Wing program was canceled due to budget constraints and technical barriers, but its influence remained. It showed the world a daring glimpse of hybrid aviation possibilities. While this military project ended without production, the idea of combining extremes continued to thrive. Not long after, another American project stunned the world, this time by turning a commercial airliner into a futuristic weapon system. In the early 2000s, the United States transformed a Boeing 747 into a futuristic airborne weapon. Known as the Boeing Whale One, it carried a powerful chemical laser mounted in its nose, capable of destroying ballistic missiles in flight. Powered by four Pratt and Whitney JT-9D7 engines, each producing 43,500 pounds of thrust, it cruised at 565 miles per hour, or 909 kilometers per hour. I'm seeing Sears. The massive aircraft was heavily modified to carry targeting sensors, tracking systems, and laser optics. Its complex onboard computers guided the energy beam with precision, enabling it to strike threats miles away. Engineers reinforced the fuselage to house tanks of chemicals that powered the directed energy weapon. This unusual blend of commercial airliner and futuristic armament shocked aviation enthusiasts and military strategists alike, standing at the edge of bizarre and groundbreaking. During test flights, the IL-1 successfully intercepted and destroyed multiple airborne targets, proving the technology was viable. The ability to neutralize missiles before they entered national airspace offered an unprecedented defensive shield. However, the system was extremely costly to operate and maintain, requiring specialized crews and equipment. Its futuristic appearance fascinated the public, but its practicality for large-scale deployment remained deeply in question. By the end of the program, the WAL-L1 was cancelled due to shifting budgets and strategy. Yet its impact on military aviation was undeniable, pushing the limits of directed energy weapons. The bizarre concept of a laser jetliner became a fascinating proof of concept, inspiring future projects in energy-based defense. As it left service, another Rutan creation took flight with a completely different goal. In the mid-1980s, Burt Rutan unveiled one of the most daring experimental aircraft ever built, the Rutan Voyager. Its mission was singular and bold to circle the globe without refueling. With twin fuselages, an extremely long wingspan, and ultralight composite materials, it looked more like an insect than an airplane. At the nose sat a Teledyne Continental IO-240, while the rear housed a Continental O-200 working in tandem. The Voyager's average cruise speed was 120 miles per hour or 193 kilometers per hour, but speed mattered little. Nearly every inch of space was devoted to fuel, leaving a cramped cockpit for its two pilots. It could carry thousands of gallons of fuel, testing the limits of endurance. 
Its fragile appearance made many doubt the attempt, but its design was carefully calculated for maximum efficiency and strength. In December 1986, the Voyager launched its record-setting flight. Over nine grueling days, it traveled 22,000 nautical miles, fighting storms, turbulence, and the sheer exhaustion of its crew. The aircraft completed the journey without refueling, establishing a world record never surpassed. What once seemed impossible became reality, cementing the Voyager as one of the most fascinating achievements in aviation history, born from an almost bizarre vision. The Voyager proved that experimental aviation could achieve milestones far beyond traditional limits. Its insect-like silhouette and extreme endurance redefined what home-built aircraft could accomplish. From bizarre looks to awe-inspiring results, it demonstrated the power of innovation. And while the Voyager set records for distance, another experimental aircraft from decades earlier had focused on testing radical aerodynamic shapes. At the dawn of the 1950s, the Northrop X-4 Bantam emerged as a compact and radical experiment in aerodynamics. It was designed without a horizontal tail, testing how a tailless fighter might behave. Powered by two Westinghouse J-34 engines, each delivering 1,600 pounds of thrust, the Bantam reached speeds of 410 miles per hour, or 660 kilometers per hour. Small, yet futuristic in appearance. Its short fuselage, forward cockpit, and swept wings gave it an aggressive look reminiscent of gliders crossed with fighters. Engineers hoped it would reveal insights into stability and control without traditional tails. In high speed flight, the Bantam performed surprisingly well, showing stable behavior. But at low speeds, it became overly sensitive, demanding constant pilot correction. These quirks made it unsuitable for combat, yet invaluable for research. Pilots described flying the X-4 as both challenging and unforgettable. Every maneuver required skill and anticipation, as the aircraft reacted differently from conventional designs. Despite its small size, it carried huge importance, serving as a flying laboratory that tested the boundaries of control. The Bantam was not meant for war, but for knowledge, offering crucial data that helped shape later experimental jets and even influenced delta wing research. Though it never entered production, the Northrop X-4 Bantam remains a symbol of courage and experimentation. It captured the bizarre essence of tailless flight while delivering insights that fascinated engineers for decades. From strange civilian deltas to executive starships and asymmetrical wonders, these machines remind us that aviation history is built on bold ideas. These stories show how imagination can turn the impossible into reality. Which invention blew your mind the most? Leave your comment now. Did this journey inspire you? Give it a like. Know someone who loves aviation? Share this with them today. Have you subscribed yet? Make sure you do not miss what comes next. Watch the videos appearing here on screen and continue exploring the aircraft that fascinate the world of aviation. Bye bye.